What's going on, football fans? It's time once again for another rendition of the Pound for Pound. I'm your host, J.R. Clark, and today we're going to be previewing week three of the NFL. At least week three for the NFL for our Dirty Birds. This week we're taking on Detroit Lions up in Detroit at 1 o'clock at Ford Field. That's going to be an interesting matchup to me. You know, this is uh, not the slam dunk that it would have been, you know, a couple years back. Uh, I feel like that this is a potentially a much improved Detroit team that we're going up there and facing. Uh, you know, they got that dude, uh, that man, uh, Ziggy Anza. Now, he's shown up as limited on their injury report this week uh, with a knee. So, he may not be 100% full go, but I, as of right now, he's definitely going to be out there. So, that's somebody that, uh, against the Giants and, and their atrocious offensive line, uh, he was able to definitely create some havoc. Uh, and he definitely seems to be like an emotional leader on that defense. Uh, so that's somebody that our Falcons are going to have to account for. Um, not 100% sure it's going to be as easy as the Green Bay game turned out to be. For one, you're on the road, and every road game in the NFL is a tough game. I don't care what it, you know who you're playing, unless maybe it's you know the Browns or the Patriots against the Saints. I mean... That did, they didn't seem to have much trouble. But then again, their defense is, huh. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, back to our game. Uh, so we're going up to Ford Field to, you know, play against the Detroit Lions. And like I said, I, I'm not so sure it's going to be an easy task. Now, I think it's a task that we can handle. I think it's a task that we can win. Um, but it may be, you know, close to somewhere in between the – the Green Bay dominance and the somewhat struggle against the Chicago Bears. Um, <clears throat> they got a couple good, you know, run stuffers in uh, Haloti Nada and uh, Ashawn Robinson. Those are some big dudes. So that's going to be a test for our offensive line to see if we can, if we can move them, if we can get them moved on the point of attack uh, to get our run game going. And if we can get any semblance of the run game going, then the play action pass comes alive. And that's something that this offense definitely strives off of. It's something that Matt Ryan is, you know, very comfortable with, uh, even going back to the days of Michael Turner. You know, I mean, that was something that, that Matt Ryan has, you know, built his career on, so to speak, is, is being able to execute that play-action pass. So it's going to be real important to get, the, uh, to get the ground game going. It's going to be important to try to get Julio Jones going early. Uh, ten good things tend to happen when we get him going early, because that really you know makes that defense, the opposing defense, panic. I guess you could say, because now they're like, oh god, we have to double and triple team him, and that leaves any number of guys open to be able to uh, exploit some matchups. Um, a matchup I think that we can exploit uh, going to be our running backs against their linebackers. Uh, looks like. Detroit's uh, rookie middle linebacker Jared Davis out of Florida doesn't look like he's going to play in this game. He hasn't practiced so far this week, and he got a concussion on Monday. So coming off of you know a shorter week for them, and the fact that he hasn't practiced, there's more than likely he's not going to play. So that leaves our old buddy uh, Paul Warlow out there, and we know how well he is at covering running backs coming out of the backfield. Um, I'm going to leave him and. Uh, Tareer Whitehead, I believe is his name. I don't know a ton about him, so I apologize to any Detroit fan watching this. Uh, I know that annoys me when I'm watching somebody talk about my team and they don't know who they're talking about, so I apologize to you. But uh, I think the biggest matchup, that, that the, the key to this game, is going to be our cornerbacks against their wide receivers. And I say that as in not that their wide receivers are all world. They're great wide receivers, I mean, you got Golden Tate, who is just a marvel at yards after, you know, catch and yards after contact or whatever. He's just, he's real, he's got some real escapability as far as a, a wide receiver goes. I mean, you saw that in his days in Seattle, and he's carried that to Detroit. But then they also got Marvin Jones, who's more of like a speedy, uh, uh, take the top off type guy, uh, especially from his days in uh, Cincinnati. They paid him a boatload of money last year. 
Um, so, you know, he's kind of, I guess, far as salary goes, the de facto number one. Then you got got um, their tight end, Eric Ebron, who's definitely more of a pass-catching tight end. Um, I think his blocking is, is lacking, you know, all around. So if he's out there, it's more of a receiving threat. And then you also have uh, Theo Reddick coming out of the backfield, who's probably, you know, short of our duo, probably one of the best pass-catching tight ends. Not tight ends, pass-catching running backs that this league has. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. But uh, but all that is predicated off of Matt Stafford's ability to extend the play. Matt Stafford's ability to throw from some weird, weird angles. I mean, for the people down here, we saw him do that in his college days in Georgia, and he's continued doing that and has made you know, a career off of doing you know these weird angle throws um, that not too many other quarterbacks can make. So if you're going to... If you're going to chase him, you've got to get him to the ground, you know, for sure. And, and I think, you know, we have the defense that can do that. We have, you know, the fast, uh, speedy linebackers that can close ground. You know, we have, uh, you know, hard-hitting safety. Uh, you know, we have a myriad of different uh, rotational pieces on the defensive line that I believe we can continue to create havoc in, um, you know, for – Detroit in their offensive line, which isn't all that great. <coughs> One second, sorry about that. <sighs> Much better. So anyway, what I was trying to say is that watching that game Monday night against the Giants, the Detroit's offense wasn't didn't have to do a ton, okay? Because you know uh, New York's offense was like stuck in mud, so. There wasn't really a need to really press it and really, you know, push the issue. Where Matt Stafford is known for, you know, coming alive in the fourth quarter, he didn't really have to do that on Monday. But if you watch that game, New York's defense was really abused their offensive line. I mean, you got a former second overall pick in Cam Robinson. The, the um, is that his name? Cam Robinson. It was the number two pick in the draft that we drafted Jake Matthews. Because I remember the big debate was, do we want to take that guy or do we want to take Jake Matthews? Obviously, we ended up taking Jake Matthews. St. Louis took um, the guy whose name is escaping me. But um, he got bounced out of St. Louis because, oh, now L.A., uh, because he just never progressed. You know, he he never, his technique never got any better. You know, he never did really develop. So, you know, they let him go. And the Lions picked him up, and as far as I could tell, at least watching that game on Monday, it doesn't look like he's gotten too much better. So uh, that that could spell good for us and for our defensive line being able to, you know, hopefully wreak havoc on, you know, Matthew Stafford. But the difference is here, just like with Aaron Rodgers, you've got to keep him hemmed in, you know, because he's looking to – you know, extend the play, whether it be with his feet or extending enough for somebody to come open to where he can make a throw. And he's going to try to make a throw. He he believes in his arm talent. That much is for sure. He believes that he can fit that ball in in any window from any angle. So what that tells me is that our cornerbacks are going to have to plaster whoever they're covering. Our linebackers are going to have to plaster the running backs and the tight ends coming out of the backfield. Because if we can't get to Stafford and get him down, then there's a chance that he's going to create a play downfield, like a la, in a vein of Russell Wilson. Like that's where Russell Wilson really makes his plays is is when when stuff starts to break down and somebody comes open because you just can't cover somebody that long. So our guys are going to really have to to plaster, you know, the receiving threats, whether it be the running back, wide receiver, or tight end. Now, as far as how I feel like we can attack, you know, their defense, like I stated earlier, I think we can attack their defense with, you know, like Tevin Coleman and um, Austin Hooper and Devontae Freeman coming out of the backfield. You know, we may have to be early on a little more of a, you know, dink and dunk kind of and let our guys, cre- you know, do what they can as far as creating yardage. And hopefully that'll soften up that underbelly to where we can then hit them over the top. Or at least, you know, we need to try to get our play action 
you know, a run game going so the play action game can come alive. You know, if we can get the run game going and the play action comes alive, then, you know, Julio Jones has a chance to eat. Muhammad Sanu is always good coming across the middle. You know, you got the guys coming out of the backfield. You know, our offense, as we know, is can be tough to handle. So I, I really think that we need to try to establish, you know, the run game early. See if we can push that that uh, Detroit defensive line. See if we can block it up, <coughs> which is going to be interesting because there's no Ryan Schrader this week. And he's already been ruled out. So it's either going to be Ty Sombrello or Austin Pastor. Probably going to be Ty Sombrello because he played last week. So you'll probably have Pastor suit up as the, as the backup this week. But Ty Sombrello was a little rough, he, a little rough coming into the game early on. But I think he settled in and he did okay. And we were still able to run the ball against Green Bay. So, you know, hopefully Ty Sombrello now another week in, another week in our system, you know, another, actually getting some game experience. And um, hopefully that they can, you know, that he can continue to improve at least for this week because I really feel like Schrager will be back next week. So you got him, and then you got the lack of Vic Beasley. <coughs> These are two really important things. You know, Beasley will, uh, he may be out, you know, roughly a month. So, y'all got to forgive me, I got a tickle in the back of my throat, and it's killing me. <coughs> well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up because I think I'm starting to loop back in on myself. So, I'm predicting the Falcons win. I think we come home with a victory. I think we come home 3-0. And as always, Falcons fans, rise up.